we go. So the match forward, you know, if you are listening to this now and uh, and I know that somewhere in, inside your core, there's a desire for more. Somewhere there, inside your heart of hearts, there's a desire to be more, to do more and to have more. And so that, that you know, so maybe this is the question. Maybe if, if, if just nod your head if you agree with this, that you want to achieve even more out of your life. Just nod your head. Yeah, nod your head. All right, so nod your head one more time. If you want to be successful, even more successful with your life, Nod your head. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, so we're talking about match forward. Now you can stop nodding your head, right? <laughs> this is match forward uh, at Nigeria summit. So we we done a, a, a bit of research, asked some questions. What are the common issues in Nigeria right now? What are the common issues affecting the young, the youth, uh, the, the, uh, whatever age? What, what's happening? What's really happening? You know, uh, one of the things that we find out eight things that are going on. People are frustrated about the way things are in the country. Uh, and maybe you're not in Nigeria, maybe where you are, wherever you are. Maybe a lot of people are uncertain about the future. A lot of people feel dissatisfied with where they are now. People want change, people want progress, but just don't know how to do it. People are experiencing no help or no support from the government or anyone else. People have dreams and aspirations, but lack motivation and the resilience to push through. Some people right now, maybe this is you, maybe you're faced with doubt. Maybe you're faced with lack of self-confidence in yourself. Maybe you are at the verge of giving up on your goals and dreams, or maybe you've been told somewhere along the line that, hey, you know, shut up, just stay where you are, manage what you have and just live your life that way. Maybe that's where you are now. Mm. I remember moments in my life when I was here, you know, all of this was going on in my life. I was confused. I was dissatisfied. I was wanting more out of that. Now, for one minute, for one minute, can I just ask you to imagine this? Imagine that you are no longer frustrated about the way things are. Imagine that you are certain about your future. Imagine that you are no longer dissatisfied with where you are. Imagine that you are experiencing the kind of change and progress that you want and you just know how to get there. Imagine that you have the right support. Imagine that you have the dreams and aspirations and there you have the, the motivation and the resilience to push through, to push through difficult times. Oh, yes, I know. Most of us who are going to be sharing our story, I'm going to tell you a lot. We've got true stories. I'm sure you are watching. You probably have a lot of story to share of difficult times and difficult moments. Maybe you just imagine that you are no longer faced with doubt and you have a good level of self-confidence in yourself, a good level of self-awareness to show up, to deliver, to show up 100%. Just imagine that you are able to persist with your goals and dreams and that you have a never give up attitude. Just imagine that this is you. Imagine this is you. Mm. You would agree with me that to come from a place where, you know, things are not right and things are right, You'd agree with me that it, it's got to be a strategy. There's got to be something that takes you from point A to point B, right? It's got to be something that moves you from, hey, nothing's happening to something is happening. I'm in control now. I can take action now. There's got to be something that you know, something that you do that can get you there. Now, this is what we want to share with you with this match forward event. We're going to be sharing our story. And in there, you will find some hows of what we've done, things that we might, that might work for you. Some of no, I, I, I mean, not all things will work for you, but maybe there might be just something that you hear today that could kickstart a new, a new movement in your world. I don't know, but we want to share with you that strategy. And then you might say, well, why should I listen to this? Hey, listen, you matter. You matter. Your dreams are valid. Dano said something yesterday. I think that was a word from Lupita Nyong'o. He says, your dreams are valid. You, wherever you are right now, maybe you're upside down. Maybe you're scraping and trying to you know, survive for the next day. You matter. If you're in this group right now, if you're in here listening to this, maybe you're listening to the recorded version of this, you matter. Your dreams are valid. I want to remind you again and again that you matter. 
Now you might say, well, who's Kelvin? What's Kelvin's story? Well, I thought I'd show, I'd show you some pictures here yeah, to show you a bit of my story. You know, I went to Government College of Corridor. I can't see people on the screen, but if you, if you know Government College of Corridor, just nod your head, put your hands up, whatever. You know, I went to Government College of Corridor right there in Lagos, Nigeria. And, uh, you know, good to have Daniel here. You know, Daniel was my senior in the school. It was a boarding school. <laughs> Now, can you see some faces that you recognize yet? <laughs> is some yes, faces? I do. I do. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> can you see the drama department? That was the drama department. You can see those people, uh, the, the bunch of people on the right, uh, wearing their costumes for a, 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 sh a play they just did on, the, on stage. Uh, uh, this is this is where this is my roots. This is where I studied, you know, in, in Nigeria. And Daniel, you were the, I think you were, at one point, you were in the drama department. You were like the leader of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. And, yeah, you know, I, I'm not surprised that you're, you know, you're championing Netflix now, Nollywood. Everyone's talking about Daniel F. Young right now. You know, uh, and this is, this is the root. This is where we started. This is where I started. I was a uh, uh, year. Yeah, uh, below um, Dana, Dana was my senior. Dana was the um, was the president of the Christian Fellowship, and when he was about to pass out, you know, graduate and leave, he passed on the baton to me to lead uh, the, the small Christian Fellowship. And I was young; I was not even sure I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> you you gave me a huge burden, uh, burden of responsibility there, Dana. You know, uh, and you know what that that's ushered me into this journey into the journey of speaking. You know, I just wanted to just go on stage every Sunday and they call me the preacher or whatever. But really I was just sharing. I sometimes I share things I don't even know. I just share something that I hear my pastor say the other day. <laughs> I just share a bit. But, but I did it for a period of time in, 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 in at SS1, at SS2 to SS3, you know, a senior, senior level. And, and, and I say, you don't know how the people around you, what they carry. You don't know what they carry. You know, I don't know what you saw in me, Dan. Now, this is, you know, this is crazy because I'm, I'm talking about you here because you gave me that opportunity that has ushered me and, and has been a very strong force in my life. And I would always go back to my root and remember the first time my grace is snake. I was shaking. I was, sh I was literally stuttering the first time I had a chance to speak. But, but it's, it's good to see Daniel here 22 years later. We're here on, on, on Zoom having great conversations and sharing our story to inspire other people. This is just a bit of my story. You know, so when I finished, you know, I, I, I moved over to, to the UK in 2008 to do a master's degree in business management. With some of my classmates, we graduated together in 2010. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a good experience moving in 2008. And, and, and when I think about it, it was a journey. Like, I, 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 in fact, I even missed some of the stories I didn't share. I, I, I'll leave that for another day. I, you know, how I, how I failed a class, right? How I failed SS2 and had to do SS2 again as the leader of the fellowship, leaving, you know, how to fail a class. It was, I mean, it was, it's, a, it's a crazy story, but, but that's, I've been, I've been failing all my life. So I'm not afraid of failure anymore. Let me just say this. If you're watching this, never be afraid of failure. I'm sharing this again to you just to show you some of my story and my journey. And, and, and when you finish master's or you finish your education, what's the next thing? You've got to find a job. So I had to look for a job. And I remember I, I, right there, I, I, was, I was working in one of the kitchen porters in university. And, and I, was, I was washing plates. I was in a menial job. You know, this was a restaurant for students. And I, I was still waiting for my certificate to come out, whatever. But I took up with a job to wash plates in the university and, and take all the trays of plates and then put them in a dishwasher. And I was doing it. And I remember there's this guy called Ali. Ali came in every Saturday to the restaurant. And I'm like, Ali, where, do you, where are you Monday to Friday? He said, oh, I, I, work, I work in a credit union. I said, you work in a credit union? Well, what are you doing here? He's like, yeah, I'm just making extra money. I said, interesting. So tell me, Ali, how do I get in? Now, obviously, most people think when you come to the UK, the, the, the streets are paved with gold, or, or you've got to get a good, you get a good job just like that. Listen, it's a whole lot. It's a whole lot that you have to go through to survive. You have to deal, we talked about it with Mao yesterday, she said about the imposter syndromes, because again, you're surrounded by people who don't even look like you. And then you have to be able to have the courage and the confidence to say, you could do this, you could do this. 
And when I looked around me, most people who were here were either, you know, doing the same menial jobs or trying to get, you know, get away, whatever it takes to survive. And, and I remember asking Ali, how do I get in? Ali said, well, you know what? You can volunteer your time. I said, yeah, good idea. Okay, how do I do this? He says, well, send me your CV. So I sent my CV to, uh, to Ali and Ali told, spoke to his boss and the boss said, oh yeah, let's have a chat with Kelvin. So I come into the office, had, you know, great chat with the, with the manager of the, of the credit union. And she said to me, we can't pay you. I said, that's fine. That's fine. I'll volunteer my time. He said, are you sure? I said, yeah. So I remember, you know, going back home and I'm like thinking, how am I going to pay my bills? I'm going to work with these people for three days a week, nine to four. They're not paying me. Oh my God. Anyway, I took it on. You know, and I remember my friends took the meek out of me. They kept, you know, they say, you're going to a job. You're wearing a suit and tie and they're not paying you. Oh man, you're crazy. I said, don't worry, don't worry. Anyway, I went in there. It was an experience for me to get in, to meet people and to have conversations with people I've never met before. And, and and a month into it, a month into doing this, Ali was to go back to Pakistan to get married. And so they, his job became vacant. And they said, Kelvin, would you like the job? I said, yeah. They said, come on. So I, I got in, as, I, I was given a contract as a part-time um, admin, whatever that is, admin, whatever. I got a job anyway in the credit union. And, and that was like, wow. I remember running back home and showing my friends, like, I just got a good job. I've just been giving the opportunity to earn money. Earn money, you know, even use some of my qualifications. Anyway, that was my first entry into a corporate job here in the UK. So listen, this is for you. If you're watching this and you're listening to me right now, I, I'm, not, I'm not special. Listen, I'm just, I just decided to do something that most people wouldn't do. And I know a lot of my friends who will come to the UK and I had to go back because of this, because of that. Well, I just found that in several parts of my journey, it takes resilience. It takes going a different way sometimes. It's, it takes believing in yourself to say, you know what, I'm going to do it. And sometimes you might do it for free. Sometimes you might show up for free, but the rewards are endless. From that opportunity, I moved on into an insurance firm. From that opportunity, I moved on into working for a, a corporate bank, one of the high street banks here in the UK. And I did it for seven years. You know, and, and my mom and my dad, if he knows my mom and my dad, yeah, they, they worked in a bank called Union Bank of Nigeria. If you're in Nigeria, you know what I'm talking about. Union Bank of Nigeria. So they worked there. And, and, and at a point, I looked at my life. I'm working in a bank now, just like my mom and my dad. And something within me was saying, is this all there is, Kelvin? Is there more, Kelvin? Is there more inside you? And, and, and I, I must say, I got to a point when I was dissatisfied. I wanted more. The question for you listening to me right now, do you want more? Do you really want more out of life? If you feel within yourself that you want more, I understand. I have been there and I'm still there. I still want more. I, I'm only sharing with you right now what I'm learning on my journey. And that's to say, I am still on this journey. That's to say, I am still on my, I'm, I'm not there yet, all right? Yeah. Newsflash, I'm not there yet. But I'm still on this journey and, and willing to share with you some of the things that have worked for me. In 2014, when I was going through this constant uh, battle in my mind of doing something more, and I remember sitting down in a couch, uh, in a comfort of a, of a room with a couch, and he asked me the question, what do you want more out of life, Kevin? What do you want more? What do you want to do? What more do you want? I said, I wish I could say to you, I wish I could say to you now, I said, I want to be a coach. I want to be a speaker. I want to travel around. I didn't, I didn't have a clue. I didn't know what I wanted out of life. So the question right now for you is, do you know what you want? Do you really know what you want out of life? And if you do know what you want out of life, are you living it? Are you doing everything possible to ensure that you're living your life to the fullest? Three days after that conversation, I, I was still going through my mind, what do I really want? What do I really want? And then it dawned on me. I remember I watched a movie called um, Coach Carter. Well, Samuel L. Jackson takes a bunch of players, you know, troublesome players, and turns them into underdog basketball players, and they became, you know, superstars. I wanted to be Coach Carter. 
I want to be someone who can encourage people. Obviously, when I go back to government college ecology days, when I was on the stage encouraging people, I remember when I even left in my degree, when I did my first degree in Lagos, I remember always having that kind of motivational conversations with people. So deep down, there's always been a part of it that wants to encourage people. So I went back to the coach and said, I want to be a coach. I want to inspire people. I want to, you know, hence my name, Calvin Inspires. I want to inspire people. I want people because I know what it feels like to, to reach a point in your life and to say, is this it? Is there more? I know what it feels like sometimes circumstances or the environment may, may make you feel like, you know, you don't count or you're not valid or, you're, or you don't matter. I know I've been there. If you feel that way, listen, you matter. You matter. I went back and said, I'm going to be a coach. So I said, all right, jump into it. So I, in 2014, I started my coaching business part-time while still working for the bank. And in 2018, I had to make a choice. Kelby, what do you want? What do you, are you going to carry on here doing this part-time or are you going to go full-time? You know, and I listened to Steve having one of the videos that went viral. He said, jump. Oh, just jump. You know, and so what did I do? I jumped. I told my boss, I'm living. He said, you're living where? I said, I'm going. And he says, really? I said, yeah. And, and I wish I could tell you that I wrote my resignation letter so peacefully, I handed it, handed it, handed it over to him and said, yeah, no, no. I, I literally was shaking. I was, I was like, yeah, yeah, here's my resignation letter. I said, are you sure? I said, yeah. I was scared. I was scared. But, but I summoned the courage and the boldness and said, here you go. I'm going. And I jumped. And when you jump, what do you do? You land. <laughs> I jumped and I landed on my face. You know, I fell flat on my face. No clients were waiting for me. Nobody were waiting to, I said, I'm a coach. Can I coach you? No, not today. Can I help you? No, not today. Literally, I had to knock on doors, knock on doors. And I think the rev one of the things that really changed my game it was joining the John Maxwell program. When I joined the John Maxwell program, oh my God, I paid for this. When I was told to the, the joining fee, I said, what, $4,000, are you, are, you, are you serious? It's like, ah, I just left the bank, I haven't got money. But I just took a step. I had a deposit for $700. I made a deposit of $700 that I am going to join the John Maxwell program. And I paid that. And, and, and I, was, you know, I, I joined this in April, 2018. The, the plan was to go to Orlando as of uh, August 2018. I didn't have the money. I couldn't get the money. I had no clients. Nothing was happening for me. And, and so I said, you know, I'll push it to next year. And, 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 you know, persistence, resilience, persistence and resilience. I kept believing in myself. I wish I could tell you it was easy. It was hard. Hard, 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 but I pushed through and, and I was listening to things. I'm gonna share some things that I do that help me to stay positive in the moments of difficulty. And I pushed through and as of February, 2019, I was able to pay off the full amount and fly to Orlando and meet John Maxwell and 3000 other John Maxwell team members who flew in from all over the world to be a part of this. And so I became a certified John Maxwell um, coach, speaker and leadership trainer. And, and this is what I do now. So I, in, in my local area, I run leadership training. This is an accounting firm in Portsmouth. I run leadership training for them. I also train other, other businesses. And more importantly, there's something I want to show you here. This is a picture of me and a few other uh, crazy guys. Now, the guy on the right is my business partner. We have a, another business, not Calvin but another business, where we take people who are in a construction business, we take them on a journey for 90 days. We wipe them out. They were 90 days to train them on leadership, on communication, on growing their business. Now, my business partner happens to be uh, a painter and a decorator. In Nigeria, we don't really give thumbs up or props to, to, to skilled labor. I don't know about, I mean, Africa, I think it's a big, like, you want to be a carpenter, you don't want to be a plumber, you don't want to be a painter, decorator. These guys are painters, decorators, guys who build houses, guys who make hundreds of thousands of pounds. They make loads of money right here. And so we help them to grow their business where their business can function without them being in there. 
That's what we do. So we take, and most of them are only studied up to college level. Not even, they didn't even go to university, college level and, and decided, what do I have? What kind of skill can I do? And they went on, they trained on it, and now they are good at what they do. And people pay them heavy bucks to build a house, to, to design, to paint their buildings or do whatever. And so we are helping them to become great leaders. We're helping them to grow, grow their businesses to, to a level where they can say, my business can function. I could go on holiday and my business can still function. And so we, so we, are, we, we do a lot there. And one of the things, one of the things we do, apart from working on their business, apart from working on the leadership, one of the things we do is work on their physical strength. Listen, come on, fitness level. You follow me on Instagram. You say I do quite a lot of posts. You know, as of August last year, we climbed the tallest mountain in, in England. Uh, uh, and it's three thousand two hundred nine feet, uh, really high. You know, that, that's me there, the, the African boy. Yeah? <laughs> I told my mom, I'm climbing the mountain. She said, for what now? <laughs> she said, what are you doing mountain for? How much are they paying you? <laughs> I said, they don't pay me, mommy. It's for me. It's for me to grow my mind, to grow myself. We do a lot of training every morning, 6 a.m. We are running. We are running 5K on a daily basis. We are riding our bikes around the town, round up the hill to, to stay fit to stay fit because we, we you know what we're doing here is character formation listen it's all about character if you can persist when it's hard if you can persist when it's difficult you can take that same character and apply it to your goals and apply it to your dreams and apply it to your business and that's what we do we we work every day on our body you know, every day on our bird. So we climb mountains. I know it's crazy, but we climb mountains. And we've got another, you know, we're in a 90 day program at the end of a middle of April, we are doing a 70 mile walk around the Isle of Wight, which is a small island, about 70 miles long. We are climbing, we are walking all that in, in the month for the space of two days. And, and listen, I, I understand at this level that I am, I'm gonna walk on my fitness. You know, I, I you know, uh, uh, starch, pounded yam, uh, pounded yam in my goosey. Don't joke with me with that. All right, so I do that and I know I've got to work on my body. And I know I'm doing what I call character formation. This is us right there at the top of the peak, 3,209 feet. I know um, Edward is here. Edward is the running man. He's a champion when it comes to running. Edward has done loads of runs and I had so much awards for doing over 200 miles or the rest of it. You know, so I give you a big, big thumbs up because I know it's a lot. It takes a lot to do it, but this is us. This is me at the top of the mountain. And I'm only just sharing this with you so you can understand my story. You know, sometimes we think it's all, everyone's had it, everyone has it easy going for them. Sometimes you don't know the story. It's hard sometimes. And when it's hard, what do we do? We move on, we push on. So finally, some bits of information I want to leave with you. And the question is, what is your personal goal? You know, when we got to the uh, Orlando in 2019, John Maxwell asked the question. The question was, what is, what is your personal growth plan? I know you've flown from the UK. I know you've come from Spain, from, from Thailand. I know you've come from all over the world. Let me ask you this question. What is your personal growth plan? We are told to have business plans. We are told to have financial plans. But somewhere along the line, nobody is saying, what is your personal growth plan? This is why I work on my body, because that's my personal growth plan. I am the engine and the machine of what I create. You are the engine and the machine of what you create. As you match forward, think about this. What is your plan? What are the three things you're going to do when you get up every morning? There are three things I do every morning. One, I pray, I meditate, I connect with my spiritual growth. Secondly, one of the things I do is I read. I read a lot of books. I love books. I'm, books are, are, are the gateway to another man's journey. So we can learn from other people's story and apply them into our own lives. I walk on my mind. And thirdly, I walk on my body. I walk on my body, on the fitness level. I have got to stay energetic. I have got to stay strong to bring these dreams, to bring these goals into a reality. I, it takes that because sometimes you have the dream you have a desire but you know the body says not today son and then you're going to chill and relax no we're going to get back into it if you're not doing anything on the fitness level it is time to match forward and everything in my story just taking a step match forward take a step forward a step today a step that could change your game 
Most people have no growth plan because they don't think about it. Some John Maxwell says that nobody climbs a mountain accidentally. Everything worthwhile, listen to this, everything worthwhile, everything you need, everything I need is at the top of the mountain. But guess what? Nobody climbs it accidentally. We have got to be intentional. Well, the laws of growth is the law of intentionality that states growth doesn't just happen. To grow, to become the best that in your field, it just doesn't happen. Now, think about it for a moment. Think about it for a moment. A lot of information online. We, we've been in the digital age, the information age in the year 1970, right? Look, whatever you're looking for, just go on Google, type it, it comes out in a split second. Now you think about the availability of information, but then look at the results. Look at the results people are bringing. There's a big contrast, there's a big distinction, there's a big gap. That gap between what you know and what you do, we want to close that gap. You have got to work every day to close the gap between where you are and where you want to be by taking some, some action intentionally, intentionally taking action. I'm going against time. Let me just round this up very quickly. Yeah, so the eight growth gap traps. This, this is very important. Pay attention. Number one is the assumption gap. People assume I would automatically grow. Listen, you, will, you don't grow automatically. You grow by intention. The moment you stop eating is the moment you start dying, right? You, your body will just start going down. You've got to eat to keep your body going. The same process applies to life. You don't become the best in your field automatically. I'm sure Daniel can share his story. I'm sure if he will hear you hear a story, it, it didn't happen automatically. It happened by intentional, consistent actions, by taking consistent actions on a daily basis. The second gap is the knowledge gap. Most people say, I don't know how to grow, but if you don't know how to grow, it's time to ask questions. It's time to engage in seminars and workshops that can improve your knowledge. Now, the third one is the timing gap. People say it's not the right time to begin. Listen, it is the right time now. I'm 36 years old and one of the questions I ask myself every day is, Kelvin, do you expect to be successful? Knowing that you are married, you have two kids, knowing that where you are right now, look at your life, Kelvin. Do you expect to be successful with all that you are doing? Do you expect, are you doing everything that you need to do? Hmm. Are you engaging? Are you pushing yourself? Are you stepping out of your comfort zone, Kelvin? I've got to ask myself that question. And sometimes when I do, I feel a sense of, boom, come on, Kelvin, you can do more. You can do more. And I encourage myself. The mistake, yeah, most people are afraid of making mistakes. Never be afraid of making mistakes. As a matter of fact, Daniel says something, he says, make more failures. Fail more, fail more, fail more. Mistakes are good perfection gap. Perfection is an illusion. I have to find the best one before I start. I have to find it. Nah, 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 nah. Just take action. Listen, just jump right in and take action. The inspiration gap. I need to be inspired to take action. No, you don't need to be inspired. You need to get up and take action. You need to get up and take action. Ah, oh, the comparison gap. Others are better than me. It's good to have others better than you so you can learn from them. Be happy for those who are better than you because you can learn from them and because you can always learn from them. Come on now. The final one, the expectation gap. People say, I thought it would be easier. Listen, don't wish it was easy. Wish you were tough. Wish you were strong. This is why we do the fitness every day so we can stay hard. That's the word we share amongst ourselves. Stay hard. Stay hard. Stay hard. Come on. Do it. One more time. And that's my story. That's who I am. That's what I'm doing. I'm still living my story. I'm still showing up every day. So if you follow me on Instagram, you see my fitness pic videos that I put out there. As a matter of fact, we're raising money for, for charity at the moment. And that's what we're doing. So this is, this is me. Match forward. This is just a way to encourage you. I know it might be hard sometimes. I know it might be difficult. I have been there. We have all been there. I'm pretty sure I can see Lee smiling and, and, and Trevor nodding and Edward saying, yeah, we have been there. You know, you should hear Edward's story. You go on Wisdom's YouTube channel, you will find Edward's story right there. You need to listen to him. This is a man who has got so much award and he, he runs, he's on the Kalahari Desert. He's, he runs, he's a runner. <laughs> And, and again, it, it's, it's to grow himself, to grow what he's doing, to grow his vision and to grow for the dreams. So you are in the room surrounded by dreamers. You are in the room surrounded by people who are not, you know, uh, satisfied with the status quo, who want to change things around, who want to move forward. And so I, I hope I've been able to encourage you a little bit with my story there, just to say, 
march forward. Take a step. When you drive, you can only see six foot ahead of you. You can't see beyond that, but you keep driving anyway. So might as well just keep driving with your life. March forward, march forward, march forward. Okay, that's me. If you got questions, we got five minutes to take one or two questions before we go on a break and come back at 12. So this is your moment. Anyone got questions? Just dignify with the reaction with a hand. Okay, let's go over to, to Edward. Edward, oh, Edward's got a question. Oh my God. I hope I can answer that. <laughs> It's not really a question, uh, Calvin, it's just to say that was amazing. And I think you're so right to connect the mental and the physical, mm. and it works both ways. Mm. You know, if you think you can do something, you can do it. Mm. But also if you're physically fit, you can be mentally fit. Mm. I just want to ask you really, mm. and I love that bit, nobody climbs a mountain accidentally. That is so, so true. But what made you want to climb that mountain? Honestly, I wish I knew. <laughs> For me, it was it was it was the thrill of 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 doing something I've never done before. It, yeah, I, I come from uh, you know Nigeria, and I think we have mountains around. We have Ulumo rocks. We have mountains in Abuja. I, I just never done it before. You know, it's it's on head up. Why are you climbing the mountain? I tell my sister, why, why, are you, why are you climbing mountain for what? I say, well, I want to do it. I want to push myself. I want to challenge myself. And I think that's what it is. The, 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 the ch to challenge myself so that I could take that learning and put it into my business. Hmm. Thank you, John. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. And sometimes, you know, again, there are a lot of challenges that, that occur here and there. Engage in them. Lee, you got a question? <laughs> well, Calvin, I also just making a comment, and I also appreciated the, the mountain story, but I think the one that struck me was um, I leapt. I took that leap, mm. and I landed. Mm. Landed on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because you know what, Calvin, we expect that when we take those great leaps and we know it's taken courage and we know that it's actually meant for us, we're following our passion. We expect that it's all going to work out. Mm. And, and, and when it doesn't work out, we start to doubt ourselves and we start to question whether we made the right decision. Mm. And in the case of, and you illustrated so brilliantly with your story is that you take the leap you make the decision and then you make the decision work for you mm. you you and that landing on your face mm. um and then having to pick yourself up and to make it happen was was such a brilliant um mm. illustration of what what very, very often happens. I don't know if you want to say a little bit more about what it took for you, mm. you know, that mm. moment of, of that leap mm. and then saying, no, I'm not where I wanted to be. And now what is it going to take? Uh, at a point, Lee, I, I almost felt like going back to the bank. Sorry, can, can I get my job back, please? <laughs> I, I was over my head or something, you know, I, I made an error. Give me my job, please. Uh, at a point, that almost became my reality. I was, I was going to go back and say, help, help me. Because it, it was hard. Uh, again, just to illustrate, we were just using the mountain as 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 a as a metaphor. But but truly, when I started climbing that mountain, just when you know you've gone up an elevation, you your breathing changes. It's like, and the guys, I can see a bunch of guys. These are guys who are like they, they view it as a labor. It's like they they used to their energy, and I'm like, oh, hold on a minute, no. <laughs> Slow down, guys. And, and every time we do a cycling or running, I'm always at the back. But, but that's okay. I'm like, I know my pace. Just keep going my pace. Just keep going my, you know, you said something to me, Edward. Just even if you want to stop, just stop. <laughs> and, and, and so again, the, it, it was real for me climbing, climbing that tall mountain in England. And, and it's the same thing in business. It was hard for me. I felt like giving up. I felt like turning back and, and looking at my wife and saying, Sorry, I made a mistake. As a matter of fact, I even went for an interview. I went for a job interview and I came back and my wife was in tears. She said, I said, why are you crying? I'm trying to make this family work. She said, no, because you shared your dreams with me. 
You shared your vision with me. And none of this had you going back to a job. So what are you doing? And that hit me. That hit me. And then I got a call to say, sorry, Kelvin, we just found someone better than you. We can't hire you. I was like, oh, cheers, then. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> But that was, that was my way out, back again to stay on my dreams and stay on my goals. And yeah, sometimes I want to give up, but hey, it's, it's interesting. Okay, any more questions before we, we, we go away for five minute breaks and come back? Anybody got questions or say something in one minute? Yep. Yeah, Kelvin, I'd just like to make a quick, uh, okay, Trevor, go for it. Uh, just quick one for me. I, uh, the part that I really loved in your story was the fact that when um, you didn't have anything to get involved in, you actually volunteered to do something in the whatever it was, the industry or uh, what it was that you wanted to do. And I think too many people actually sit back and do nothing when mm. the door doesn't open for them. You kick the door down and said, hey, I don't mind if I don't get paid for this. Mm. Uh, but that's your investment. Uh, what mm. you were learning is what you actually gained out of that at the same time. I wish more people would do that every day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trevor. Thank you. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, just to add an element, I was going to go down a similar sort of line. But I think, you know, the, the thing that you said there at the end there for me, Kelvin, was really important is that you'd shared your dream with someone important to you, someone close to you, someone who you knew would support you. And I think that's absolutely key. And, 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 and just, a, just, just a note to everybody, you know, if somebody shares their dream with you, mm. never trash it, never discount it. Mm. Give them the opportunity to make it happen. Mm. And, and I think that's what your wife really did for you. She actually gave you that support. She gave you that, that permission in a mm. way yeah. to go out there and make it happen. And, and that's the, the little shove that you needed to get to no. get you out of the nest and start flapping your wings and, <laughs> and start to soar like an eagle. And, and, and that's what it takes sometimes. And, and uh, yeah, so kudos to her. Well done. Thank you.